Hi, welcome to the first episode of Your Great Journey. Each week, we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A.com. If you've ever been paralyzed with intense emotions, we've got some helpful information for you today. In this episode, we're offering an excerpt from the audiobook Calming the Emotional Storm Using Dialectical Behavior Therapy Skills to Manage Your Emotions and Balance Your Life. Written by mental health therapist Sherry Van Dyke. Calming the Emotional Storm is a great guide to coping with difficult emotions calmly and responsibly by using powerful skills. From dialectical behavior therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and mindfulness practices, these skills will change the way you respond to stressful situations, help you stop needless emotional suffering, and develop the inner resilience to help you weather any emotional storm. In this excerpt, Sherry Van Dyke shares techniques for being more effective in your life. She'll show you how to become aware of what's been holding you back and learn to access what she calls your wise self in the moments when you need it most. What gets in the way of being effective? Sometimes, even though we want to act effectively, it's not so easy. Some things that can get in the way are not knowing what you want not responding to reality and focusing on the short term. Not knowing what you want. The first and most important cause of ineffectiveness is not knowing what you want in a situation. If you don't know what your goal is, it will be very difficult for you to know what to do to meet it. So it can help if you take some time, slow yourself down, and give some thought to setting a goal before acting. In many situations, We may have more than one goal. When you have conflicting goals, as in this example, you need to access your wise self to help you decide which goal is most important to you. For it's likely that you won't always be able to meet them both. Not responding to reality. Thinking about the situation in terms of what's fair or not fair or right or wrong can also get in the way of acting effectively. In other words, You may be responding not to the situation itself, but to your judgments about the situation and your thoughts about the way you wish the situation were. For example, say you're driving down a back road. It's a pretty straight road with just a few hills. The area is unpopulated with only a few houses here and there, but the speed limit is 40 miles per hour. As you drive along, you start to think, well, this is silly. The speed limit here clearly should be 50 miles per hour. And you speed up to 50 miles per hour. When the police officer pulls you over for speeding, he's not going to care what you think the speed limit should be. The reality is that the speed limit is 40 miles per hour, and you were doing 50. Again, in order to be effective, you have to respond to the situation as it is, rather than how you think it should be or how you wish it were. Focusing on the short term. A tendency to focus on what you want or need in the short term can also get in the way of your being effective. Thinking this way can impact your ability to recognize what will be most helpful for you in the long run. In order to be effective in a situation, therefore, you must be able to reach your wise self to determine what your goal is and how you can act in your own best interest to increase the likelihood of meeting that goal. What does this mean for your life? Now that you have a better understanding of what it means to be effective, you need to consider what this means for your life. Do you tend to cut off your nose to spite your face? Do you often act from your emotional self, reacting from your emotions instead of choosing how to act? Do you tend to do what feels right in the moment rather than think about what the consequences of your behavior might be? How do you need to start acting differently in your life in order to be more effective? 
One thing that you can do to help yourself become more effective is to practice mindfulness exercises, like the following, that help you learn to access your wise self. Exercise. Accessing your wise self. Sitting or lying down in a comfortable position, bring your focus to your breath. Breathing slowly, deeply, and comfortably, close your eyes and allow yourself to open up to your present experience. Notice any physical sensations, any thoughts, any emotions that might be present for you in this moment, doing this without judgment. Just sense whatever your current experience is. If you notice yourself starting to think about your experience rather than just observing it, bring yourself back to the anchor of your breath. When you feel ready, ask yourself the question, what would my wise self do? Give yourself some time to experience a response to this question. If none comes, ask the question again. Whenever you find yourself distracted or getting caught up in emotion, use your breath as an anchor to keep returning to the present. 10 Tips for Being Effective 1. Being effective is about doing what works, acting skillfully to meet your needs in the long run. 2. Forget about what's right or wrong, fair or unfair. Think about your long-term goals and what you need to do to achieve them. 3. Effectiveness, by definition, means that you're acting from your morals and values, not against them. 4. Remember that even if you act effectively, there's no guarantee that you'll meet your goal, although the more skillfully you act, the more likely you are to achieve it. 5. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. 6. Being effective comes from your wise self. 7. Practice mindfulness exercises to help you get to your wise self. 8. To meet your goal, you have to have an awareness of what the goal is, so figure out what you want in the situation. 9. How you think the situation should be, or how you wish it were different, doesn't matter. To be effective, you must respond to the situation as it really is. 10. Think about what the situation is, how you feel about it, what your urge is in the situation, and what your long-term goal is. Then, putting this all together, see if you can think about what you can do to make it more likely that you'll be able to reach your goal. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Calming the Emotional Storm, using dialectical behavior therapy skills to manage your emotions and balance your life. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate it and review it. Thanks for listening. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.